A lot of singers cannot sing sitting down. And you see them there in orchestra rehearsals, and when it comes time for them to sing, they have to stand up. And why do you have to stand up? If you think about it, it limits you as an artist, as an actor. It means that every time I, stand, I, I sing, I have to stand up. What if sometimes you want to sit down? So first of all, to sing sitting down, ah, is very easy. And there's no reason why if I have an orchestra rehearsal and I'm very attentive on the conductor and I'm sitting like this, look where my, look where my chest is. Ah, why not? Why can't I sit up? But what if I have to lean back? What if I'm sitting like this? What if I want to sit this way and I want to do the Duke of Bonto and Rigoletto? I mean, I've never played a role in a rocking chair, but I can imagine that it would be possible without any problem at all. I might want to sit like this, or the stage director might want me to sit like this, or some singer, one of you out there. But why can't I sing like that? La, how are you today? I'm feeling fine. Let's go out and get something to eat. How are you today? How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Let's go down and get something to eat. There's no reason why you can't sing sitting down. The whole secret is to know how to breathe. If you breathe in a way that frees the throat, and vibrates the air in your lungs, inside the chest cavity, uh, what some singers have called the air bucket, or the drum. Uh, Helga Rosfanger was a great yogi, so was Robert Merrill. They were very advanced yogis. And uh, both of them talked about the air bucket, and developing the air bucket, and keeping the air bucket free. So if I take a breath, and I'm sitting down, I breathe, back here like my buttocks are balloons and I go and when I do that I can sing in any posture now that a diaphragm has been uh, it's in a state of contraction the back half of the diaphragm goes down and the front half of the diaphragm holds still while the back of it goes up and down like this so I take a breath then I can sing in any posture I want I can sing ah, 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 why shouldn't I be able to sing in any posture that I like, that's a stage director like? And certainly this type of thing, where you want to look very casual and very relaxed, have a deck of cards. I used to do Rigoletto all the time, and on the last note of the La Donne Mobile, I'd throw the cards up in the air. Oh, and I thought that was just a, such a great actor. Well, the truth is, it's just a gimmick that you're free to use because of the way your body works and your breath works. So where should the chest be? Breathe. And there's the chest right there. It's completely steel, still. If I were to stand up, it would be absolutely in front of me right here. And Richard Tucker said to me one time, breathe behind you and sing in front of you. So I breathe behind me and I sing in front of me. Ah, uh, but not out in front of me, but in my front, right there. And I go, ah, and then Pavarotti said in a master class at Juilliard, it's a hit like a baby, push, push, push. So when you go, when you take the breath and go, Huh, huh, and you hear that the glottis is absolutely free, huh, and now my glottis is out of my whole throat, everything's free, but that pressure is still sitting in my diaphragm. That's what uh, Alfredo Krauss called keeping the tension in his diaphragm at all times. Breathe in. Luisa Tetrosini called it keeping the pressure of the breath against the sternum at all times. And Lily Lehman called it keeping the pressure of the breath against the chest at all times. And Aureliano Perdile said to keep the breath against the pectoral muscles at all times. So I, I, I think that, uh, that generally everyone is doing pretty much the same thing. They're supporting the voice. They used to call it breath support. And that sort of got convoluted. Everybody thinks oh, the breath is supporting the voice. That's not really what's happening. Breath support means that I am doing something in my body to support the function of the breath. So if I breathe in my rear end, and now I'm ready to sing. All I have to do is stop what Lily Lehman called the breath stop. So if the breath is coming out, 
When I stop it with a glottal closure and I go, <sighs> every action is an equal and opposite reaction. So there's a reaction down here in my diaphragm. So if I want to use a breath stop method, I can do this <sighs> that I'm using the glottal closure for right now. I can move that action and do it down here and go, <sighs> and now the glottis is free and unaffected. So people use different points of leaning. I can use a point of leaning anywhere that will give me a breath stop method so that my breath does not leak. They asked Adinapati, what do you think about when you sing, considering at the time she was the greatest singer in history, and some people still think she was the greatest singer in history, and most of her colleagues of the day thought she was the greatest singer in history, and her answer was, don't be breathy. So one of the oldest exercises in the whole history of singing is to not blow air and not leak air. I don't have any, uh, let's see, let me get a Kleenex. If I don't leak air, I go, the paper doesn't move. Why? Because I put a breath stop on. That's the audible breath stop, but now what I do is I release the glottis, I go, huh, and now I relax my glottis, but I maintain the other end of that process. It's so there's a high end, huh, and a low end, huh, and I maintain that, what uh, Mattia Battistini and uh, Tetrasini call the pressure of the breath, and I press my breath, I asked uh, Mattia, Mattia Battistini, what do you think about when you're singing? He said, I press my chest. So you take a breath and go, and you press the breath up against your chest. If, if you have a leaky sound, you go, and the breath is leaking like crazy, and I go, and I stop the leak. It's so easy to do. All you have to do is have a concept. And you can sit in any position you like, and you can sing anything. There's no reason why I can't sing anything in this posture. By stopping my breath, I, it's nice to take a breath. And then I go, Winter still, my fish in the sun, am old, in milden Licht, the light of the lands. Why not? I can go, Una furtiva lagrima, negli occhi suavi spunto. There's no reason why I can't use a breath stop all the time whether I'm singing lightly or whether I'm singing with heavy music. You know, you think of Tannhäuser's uh, Rome narration and it starts off so heavy. He goes, In Brunst im Herzen. I'm still going, huh, except I'm not using the glottis, the glottis to create a stop. I'm using the pressure on my diaphragm. In Brunst im Herzen. Ah, ah, ah. And that means I can lie down and sing. Ah, 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 ah. I can do anything I want to. And you know what? Stage directors love you for it because they can ask you anything. They'll ask you to do anything that occurs to them. They can ask you to do physically, and you can do it. I had one student who used to do uh, cartwheels across the stage. One, one audition she did, she cartwheeled on the stage singing high D. And when she stopped the cartwheel and stood like this, the, the fellow said, okay, you're hired, next please. And he hired her, just the fact that she could do anything physically and still sing extreme high notes. So it would be nice if everyone could find this breath stop concept and not feed the breath into the voice some singers are agitating, they're using uh, quivers, tremolos, wobbles, all kinds of stiffness and activity. You know, you think about what you have to do to wobble, how you have to hold. Why would I do that? Only because I don't know better. Why would I quiver? Why would I wiggle? Why would I agitate? Why not just talk, take a breath, put the stopping function 
on the diaphragm and say, How are you today? It's so nice to meet you, and I'd like to go downtown with you. Maybe we can have dinner together, and afterwards we'll go to the movies. And you can understand every word I'm saying in any language. And I don't have to do anything. Breathe. I breathe like way down uh, in, in my lower back, as low as I can. I go, smile a little bit. And it gives me a very, very efficient position. This, brings in throat resonance. Some people will do this, and then put it in their nose to compensate for the throat resonance. So they go, or they'll lift a soft palate. If you create a form, Let's say you lift your soft palate. No, you're frozen and every action has an opposite reaction and that frozen form you've created, all of that tension, is going to cause a reaction in, in your breathing system, in the diaphragm root state. So if I do this, all of a sudden I have a breath control technique. So I can sing like that. Du bist wie eine Blume, so schön, so halt und rein. Der Vogelfänger bin ich ja, schönst los die Häuser, hopsasa. You're a lot of that way of singing in Germany because of this language, which is difficult, and, and you have to separate uh, before a word that begins with a vowel. So you hear a lot of this preset uh, formation. And they use uh, very often this aw, 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 and uh, if you... If you are a nice full tenor and you go, oh, and it darkens the voice, they'll start telling you that you should be singing as a, as a held tenor, which is, of course, catastrophic. The idea that Richard Tucker said to me, always sing it light. You want to keep the voice as light as you can. The German word for that is schlank, slender. So I don't want to go, ah, oh, I want to go, ah, oh, 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 and that has to be enough voice. And you know what? If I can't sing uh, whatever, Lohengrin, with that amount of voice, then I shouldn't sing Lohengrin. But there's no place where, I, where, where in, in, the, uh, in the text where I should be yelling anyway. I should be just speaking, but speaking lightly. And in his case, reverently, when he sings a couple of his arias, he sings, Infernum Land. Wunderbar euren Schritten liegt eine Burg, die man Salvat genannt. Very important to hear every single word and every single syllable, because this is where he tells the whole story of who he is, where he came from, why he came, and why he has to go back. So it's more than just diction. It's also singing in a way that will project that diction, those words, out over an orchestra into the auditorium. And remember, we want to be able to do it in any posture. So I hope this uh, sitting down will add to the various posture. There, we talked about an ideal posture for every body part. Now we have that. We breathe in the back. We, we put the pressure of the breath here. And there's no reason why I can't sing with my head in a position. Why not? Why can't I sing over my shoulder? Why can't I sing in any posture if I know where my breath stop is and how to use it?